issue of the Holocaust, I think, is really ironic because, you know, so much literature has been expended in the pursuit of exposing Hitler and the Holocaust and, and the terrible tragedy that occurred with the Jews where six million people perished. What most people in this country fail to realize is that the model for that was here, was the treatment of our Indian people, was the model for Hitler, and he said so, he wrote it down, and he said that the prison camps here were the model for the prison camps. Also the whole notion of turning the people against themselves within the prison camps and keeping them busy with each other so that they couldn't escape or didn't have other ideas was also born here and he copied it. He thought it was a very good plan and he really admired Andrew Andrew Jackson. You know, so it's a little known part of history but it is a reality and uh, nobody's ever really addressed it. Nobody's ever really talked about the Holocaust here. I mean, there were conservative, conservative figures, 19 million Indian people living in North America, 19 million. And by 1970, there were 260,000. They didn't move to Hawaii, you know, or they didn't go to Sweden. Where did they go? They are gone. They were gone killed, murdered, but 19 million people, well, that's not a holocaust. <laughs> huh. I feel that this country doesn't understand historically what happened to its indigenous people. They see it on television and they read it in the books, but they really don't see it in the practical sense. It points directly toward the racism of this country, of the white person, of the dominant society, of manipulation of the environment, uh, of its people. To, to, to us, to the white man, we're just uh, kind of like a cactus on the trail. You chop it away and get it out of the way so you can keep walking down the trail and seeing what, what the beauty you want to see. I think that one of my goals is to have our people look at themselves and stop dancing for white people and saying, we're so pretty. I want us to say, look what you've done to us. Look what you've taken. Look at the beauty we had and still have to offer you and stop treating us like subhuman human beings because we don't, we don't deserve it and we don't need it. For more than 500 years, American Indian people have been subjected to the ever-changing whims of the white man who with sword in one hand and Bible in the other swept across this land like a plague of locusts. What the people of the United States did not know was that their so-called enlightened nation was setting an example that would be followed in the 20th century by some of the worst butchers known to man, including Adolf Hitler. In his biography of Hitler, John Tolan wrote, Hitler's concept of concentration camps as well as the practicality of genocide owed much, so he claimed, to his studies of United States history and he often praised to his inner circle the efficiency of America's extermination by starvation and uneven combat of the red savages who could not be tamed by captivity. In their efforts to deal with the original inhabitants of this land, the European and then the American governments tried many different approaches. First they tried subjugation. Then when that failed, extermination. And when that wasn't totally successful, then came the reservations. 
and the land set aside for reservations in the 1800s was generally the most worthless land that could be found. Indians were relocated to these lands for as long as the grass grows and the rivers flow, unless like in the Black Hills of South Dakota. Valuable mineral resources are discovered on that land, and then the Indians are uprooted and relocated again. The enrollment issue originated with uh, when the government set up reservations. They signed up the Indians who were assigned to that particular reservation. They took a role, as it were, at that time. Everybody was given a number so that they could identify the people who were reservation-bound Indians because reservations and the inception were no more than glorified concentration camps. Indians were forbidden to leave them. And so you were given your tribal identity right then and there by the United States government. It's another labeling system. Uh, there probably was an importance for it at the time, you know, to find out numbers of uh, indigenous people. And uh, now it's almost being used against us. And uh, for a lot of the Native American Indian, whatever you want to call them, don't have a number to rely on and uh, for assistance for even being considered a part of us of the rest of us they're, they're put out or put aside pushed away and saying you don't qualify even though they may have a higher blood quantum than myself and so i don't see it where, where it's being used in a way to be beneficial to us. It's just being, it's just a way of being controlled again. You know, when you, when you take prisoners, you, you write down their names and give them a number. That way you can keep track of them. It's a very simple process. It's done in every war. It's done in every, uh, every time one group of people conquers another, conquers another group of people. Uh, when I was younger, I was extremely angry about it, you know. Now, it's a sadness because things will never be the way that they used to be. It will never happen. So I just try and work as hard as I can to retain as much of my culture for myself, for future generations. But I'm never going to let them forget it. I don't think that this country will ever really heal itself until it answers the question of what it did to its indigenous people. But confining Indians to reservations wasn't enough for many hawkish political and military leaders. Nothing short of total annihilation of the American Indian was acceptable in their eyes. Colonel John Chivington, known as the Fighting Parson and head of the 1st Colorado Cavalry, told a gathering of church deacons, It is simply not possible for Indians to obey or understand a treaty. To kill them is the only way we will ever have peace and quiet. Later that same year, he led 700 soldiers on a surprise raid against a peaceful band of Cheyenne who were camped along Colorado's Sand Creek. Just before the dawn attack, he told his men, Kill them all! Children as well! Nits make lice! Four hundred people, mostly women, children, and elders, were murdered that day as an American flag and a white flag of peace flew high over the camp's tallest teepee. As tribe after tribe was successfully depopulated, demoralized, and imprisoned on reservations, Political winds shifted and extermination began to fall out of favor. Assimilation became a new byword of a concerned citizenry, and so an educational model to make Indians into imitation white men was proposed. The centerpiece of this plan was the Indian boarding school system designed by former Indian fighter Captain Richard Pratt. His motto, kill the Indian, save the man. 
With the central philosophy which destroyed Indian families and societies by sexually violating and brainwashing generations of Indian children into believing that their language, culture, clothing, and their very identity was evil. In actuality, the effect of the boarding schools was far more devastating and far-reaching than its creators ever conceived. It is now recognized that the boarding school experience has affected multiple generations of Indian people with such symptoms as alcoholism, drug abuse, incest, sexual abuse, and other major dysfunctions. Almost every Indian person alive today, no matter how successful, carries the residual psychological scars of yesterday and must grapple with the question, when it's all over, will I be Indian or white? Uh, I grew up with the signs, uh, no Indians or dogs allowed, uh, and had to abide by those signs, not being able to go into places. And so from the very time I was very small, I think that uh, I, I learned that uh, you had to be strong in order to be an Indian. How do I define an Indian? That's a, that's a political question that's very difficult to deal with. Traditionally, the Apache people uh, didn't have a definition of who was Indian. I'm the only person that doesn't claim to be American Indian because American Indian is only 500 years old and but I was here before Columbus. So <clears throat> that doesn't make me American Indian. So I'm a non-Indian. No, I'm a non-American. Today America, nobody knows what America is and nobody knows what Indian means. So the only Indian that was defined by Congress is uh, primitive or North American Indian. But then what is primitive? Anything that goes by itself is primitive. But when you put a fence around it, it's not primitive anymore. So then what is Indian? Now if the Congress changes tune to what is Indian to who is Indian, so only half will be regarded as Indian. So American Indian cannot be defined as a nation.